This week on the Rutgers Basketball Story, it's a blackout at the rack as the Scarlet Knights host Michigan State. We'll also take a look back at RU's road game against nationally ranked Indiana. And we're going global as the international players on the Rutgers roster share their basketball stories. Good. We have 40 minutes. 40 minutes. To show them. To show them. What we represent. What we sacrifice. God. There you go. How hard we work. 40 minutes. To show them how big and how great we can be. 40 minutes to make every possession. It's going right to the lane. What's it happening? Every play. Every cheer. That was all desire. Every shot. A three, it's gone. Make them count. 40 minutes. Make, make them, them count. count. It's 40 minutes. We will never have a quick game. Anticipation filled the air as Rutgers welcomed Michigan State. a national television audience for a game between the Scarlet Knights and the Spartans. At the rack, it was a blackout as Miles Mack and company tried to give Eddie Jordan's club a conference win on their home floor. The coach knew his Scarlet Knights were dressed for the occasion and he hoped they were focused and ready for the challenge. take on Michigan State. Hey, how we doing? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, let's go out. Welcome to Rutgers. With the crowd as pumped as the players, the starting lineups were introduced. It was an atmosphere even Hollywood would envy. Kadeem Jack knows that incredible feeling. So does fellow senior Miles Mack. It's the same warm welcome they've received for years and the same fanfare, which has helped motivate the entire Rutgers team. The same sense of family, which has warmed their journey. It was absolutely electric for the home team and their coach, Eddie Jordan. It's a venue that even veteran visiting coaches never underestimate. Forbes tries a three, he buries it. The Spartans came out swinging, but the Scarlet Knights stayed composed, connecting an outside shots and hitting free throws. Rutgers was able to create some easy baskets thanks to clever and unselfish play. That play kept the crowd buzzing. Foreman, the dunk on the great pass from Mack. Let's yeah, talk about Miles Mack right here, not scoring the ball, but because of his penetration, ability to finish, he opens his up for Foreman. Knocks it in. He's got eight points here in the early going. Daniels the three. Starting to get into a rhythm here. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Rutgers hung tough with super effort and great energy. A matter of fact, there was energy everywhere at the rack, in the stands, and back on the floor. Experience and leadership. Miles Mack knows about both. 
Even when he's not scoring, he finds other ways to contribute. Foreman on the drive. Great move to the left hand. And right now, it, emotion-wise, they settled in and able to come down and now cut this lead to six points. Jack, nice patience. He has his first points. Attention. Oh, it's getting sloppy. And Miles back. Takes advantage. Rutgers battle back with a vengeance with a guy named Jack leading the charge. And the foul. Kadeem Jack, they need him to get going, and he's going to the free throw line. And sometimes some of your best players just have to take over the game with the size and athleticism to be able to be a matchup nightmare. Where's the three-point play? Jack's got seven. Jack, all by himself, but he has that type of talent. Multiple players. Jack is all along. And the question is, Jason, closing out the half, can this Rutgers team get another stop, cut this lead below five, get it to three, give themselves momentum going into halftime? A 13-5 run late in the first half enabled RU to make it a ball game. And at halftime, there was reason to believe against a tough Big Ten opponent. Daniels into the lane in the floater. Bishop Daniels has nine here on the ball game. And the beautiful thing about that move, Jason, he was under control coming out of the spin, which allowed him to remain balanced. The Spartans did not let up and cashed in when the opportunity presented itself. Jack trying to get Rutgers going. That's the second made bucket of this second half. Kadeem Jack scored 17 points. He remained resilient when the going got tough. Freshman DJ Foreman followed suit. A lot of offensive rebounds. They've got nine of them. Couldn't corral that one. Mack off the glass. Tip back in. DJ Foreman. So a couple of quick baskets here for Rutgers. As soon as you see another, I think, beautiful move that time by the Dean Jack. Junior Kerman Okoro made a statement. So it's slowed down here for Michigan State. Part of that pace, part of that some missing shots. Kerwin Okoro seeing his first action. He knocks down a three. It was a challenging night for the Scarlet Knights in their new Big Ten journey. The Scarlet Knights, a roster comprised of talented young men, all with their own unique stories about how they came to land on the banks. I'm from Central Africa and Congo. I moved to America when I was 16, and that's when I started playing basketball. The transition was, was, was tough, because when I moved there, I didn't know I speak English. I didn't know I speak French and the two other dialects from my country. For me, moving in here to the U.S. at a young age of 16 was kind of tough. But I worked hard to learn English and everything. That was a junior, Eto from Congo. It's like my younger brother. Sometimes we speak French in the locker room, and those guys look at us like, no, <laughs> nobody will have to speak French here. I said, no, nah, man. You see how you're feeling? That was the way we felt like when we came here. <laughs> we didn't know what you guys were speaking. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's my other, other brother from Africa. Yeah. All right, Gucci. 
Very good. Boy. Boy, boy. The common bond of language between Malik and Junior is special. It was something that attracted freshman Ibrahima Diallo on his first visit to New Jersey. When I first came to visit our workers, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that there was two guys speaking French, uh, Junior and Malik. And then it was just like uh, one more reason for me to want to come here. Ibrahima Diallo, who's a um, really active 6'10 center, um, runs like a deer, very athletic, will guard the rim at all costs, uh, has a nice jump shot, but their development when they're sitting out this year will mean a lot for us going in the future. I'm from Senegal in West Africa. I grew up there and it's a really hot country. It's kind of different from here. By the age of 13, I, st I started growing up and then I started playing basketball. And that's when I decided to make it to, you know, to come to America so I can have both an education and a basketball experience. I try to like look for keywords. Sometimes I know what they're talking about just because of small keywords in there. And just ask them if I'm right and then they tell me yes or no. <laughs> Inside the right elbow, Hayes going at Dorson. It's blocked by Dorson. Shaq or Shaquille Dorson, better known as Shaq is uh, a great, great kid. He's um, got good size for us. He's a project, uh, but he's learned a lot. He's, he's improved a lot from where we thought he would be and since we, he got here in September, and the sky's the limit for him. His size, his intelligence on the floor, and his willing to work is, uh, is incredible. His work ethic is just off the chart. Uh, I was born and raised in Amsterdam, city of Netherlands. Um, for me growing up was just going to school every day. I used to play soccer, so I was a big soccer head until I grew a lot, didn't like it anymore, and started playing basketball. It was all good. Their countries may be different, but their reason for choosing Rutgers is all the same. Head coach Eddie Jordan. But when they hired Coach Jordan, then uh, I met him. Then the way I talked to him, the way he talked to me back, like I couldn't, I could feel he's a good, not only good coach, but good person. Like he reminded me a little bit like my dad, the way he talked to me. Like yeah, that's the biggest things I like about him. It's not only basketball, but it's life behind the basketball. He's like a father figure, and his influence on young men is apparent to anyone who has ever watched him coach. Eddie Jordan gives credit to one virtue in particular. Patience. <laughs> patience, patience, patience. And, and I've learned that patience isn't, um, okay, you held on enough, it's time to give up. Patience is you hold on longer when it's time to give up, or when you think it's time to give up. And you'd be surprised how things will develop for your team, for life situations, um, but you have to work hard and you have to make your luck and you have to um, do all the things you have to do di diligently to overcome some things you didn't think you, you would be able to and the light at the end of the tunnel is not necessarily a train coming at you, it is uh, uh, an opening and a way and a path to success. Guinea, the Congo, Senegal, and the Netherlands. Four countries with different cultures and people. Four young men unified under one flag, one state, and one university. Four young men living the dream on the banks of the old Raritan. Physical, bring it in the paint. Good. Kadeem Jackson. Put it back though, it is. Front 
line got to be physical. Everybody be alert. Be a step ahead of the play. And a steal by Kareem Jack. Going to take it the other way and flush it with two hands. Protect your paint. Protect your paint at all costs. Dean is very coachable. He's a wonderful person. He is a sharp, uh, very uh, cerebral type of player. Giving himself the other way and a thunderous throwdown. He just comes into practice every day with, with a smile on his face, like, like he's excited no matter what the situation is. He has his saying. I guess he got from, I don't know where he got from, but it's more like always had that same energy. It's kind of enlightening to have that energy around you at all times. He's also very patient and willing to learn and get better, and he puts a lot of time in to, you know, perfect his craft and such, so, uh, you know, he possesses a lot of things that you would like in a good player and a team captain. You know, he leads by example. Get to the passing lane. That self-motivation is always good for a coach um, to sort of guide a player where he should go and how he should perform for his teammates. He's, he's, a, he's in a whole other person on the court. When he walked into that 92 field hardwood, that's when, that's when he's the most serious person in the world. A great person. I consider him as a big brother on and off the court. Kadeem Jack is definitely going to be missed. He brings entertainment value and just really doing an exceptional job in the classroom. DM down low, turn around, let's keep look is good. Sky's the limit. He'll be a pro. Um, he has all the qualifications and all the skills to be a pro. We've seen history tonight in Piscataway. In the long history of Rutgers, never have they beaten a top five team but tonight they have. It means a lot because we, we just beat a ranked team and it shows us we got it. And that's all. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thank you very much. Eddie Jordan's team traveled to the hostile environment that is Assembly Hall in Bloomington. And Rutgers has taken advantage early. 14 to shoot for Rutgers. They've got to back it out. Now Miles Mack with 10 on the shot clock. The bounce in the corner for three, and he rolls it in. Junior E2 hits the three. Hey, that's one of the guys we said was a candidate to step up. Mack thought about the three. Now E2 will try. And Junior E2 is two for two from three. Good start for Rutgers. Or well, whatever Junior E2 ain't for pregame meal, he better eat it the rest of the season. Rutgers kept their composure, and Big Greg Lewis had a slick assist. Lewis with a beautiful bounce to Miles Mack, and an answer from Rutgers on the road. They're back up by five. The Scarlet Knights showing some poise here, doing some backdoor action. Greg Lewis, the center, to the point guard, Miles Mack. At the Mack. break, RU trailed by two and looked to rebound to regain their early fury. Miles Mack, the deep three, and he splashes it home. Lewis at the elbow against Farrell. Mack for three. In the tie, Miles Mack knocks it at 36. Oh, Miles Mack. Mack again, trying oh. and hitting. He's on fire, three for three for three to start the second half. Going to give a lot of credit to this Rutgers team. This is not an easy place to play. Rutgers has some spot here in the second half. Turnover to Rutgers. Mack gets it to Daniels. Daniels throws it down. Mr. Daniels going to the fifth floor. Man, he got up so high, it was on his wrist. Nice look ahead. and finds Bishop Daniels streaking on the other Rutgers side. Rutgers shooting 50% from the floor. 18 of 36 in this ballgame as Mack tries and hits his fourth second half three. Dorson. The fake from E2 driving to the rim and Junior E2 with two balls. Junior E2 is locked in. Back down six. In some trouble. Mack got it back to the rim and he rolls it in. Well, he's stuck with it. Miles Mack scored 24, but down the stretch, the scrappy Hoosiers proved to be a formidable foe on their home floor. A hard-fought 
victory, 72-64. The final, the Hoosiers improved to 16-6, 6-3 in conference play.